Alright. Hey guys, it's Tony here, the Soy Sauce Assassin. Tonight is another night, Saturday night live chat. Here we go. There's a lot of things to go uh, talk about today. But before we start, uh, let's first kind of explain about uh, the things that we're going to have tonight. Alright, so we are going to have the chicory coffee. We're going to have the Podomo Reserve Champagne Sun Grown as the cigar of choice tonight. And we're going to talk about various stuff, of course. And uh, let's first check out the chat rooms. we got a few people here. Uh, I gotta make sure that it shows live chat because sometimes I miss some people that's like, you know, because they automatically go to the top chat But I don't even know how is the algorithm gonna, you know, choose which chat is considered as the top chat So, you know, we would we, we'll do with the live chat. That's much much better Okay, all right, so it looks like the today's choice of color of on the chat room today is blue I, I think that that color is randomized. I actually don't know which. Last time was red, and then all of a sudden now turned to blue. I am not sure how that software changes the particular color, but we can continue with that. That's okay. Uh, let's see. Trishan's here. Jason's here. Raphael's here. Damon's here, and Lens is here. Hey, Lens, you haven't been on the live stream for a while. Uh, Jason Martin's here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And I have a little crack. Right here, but I think I don't think it's gonna cause too much problem. Ooh, a little little crap here. Okay, so as we said before, if there's gonna be a problem, we just glue it up first. Cause uh, all these went through a lot of beating through a shipping process, and this is exactly why I don't like ship uh, to buy things online, because they they go through a lot of ship shipping beating. So I just put a little bit of glue here, see if that solves the problem. There we go. That became like a process now. Like, when out, put some little bit on. See what happens. So let that dry for a little bit while I'm at this. Um, relatively quiet tonight. Relatively quiet tonight. Uh, had a the Biju. Okay. Um, I had a, like a uh, really late day today so i went out and hang out and i uh, came home had a dinner and everything so just got my coffee made not long ago as you guys probably see on the uh, on the uh, facebook post i i already tried a version of the coffee which is, uh, is coffee ole so if you don't know what that is it's basically coffee milk and i have another version of the chicory coffee right here which is what i usually drink is in the latte form and the coffee is brewed using the same method as Turkish coffee. I don't know if you guys know, using a small cup and just keep going through the heat until it boils and stops and go boil and stop and go boil and stop. This is how the jar looks like for the coffee. So I know some people just gotta go, ah, uh, it's not, it's not, uh, it's decaf. Now let me explain something to you about decaf coffee. So decaf coffee does not mean that doesn't have the taste. It goes through this nowadays. It goes through the steaming process. It steams out the caffeine in there, so it doesn't remove the flavor. The flavor should be the same, and the, just the caffeine got removed because it goes through a steam process. Think of this way: like if you have rice go through a steamer, it comes out the rice is gonna taste like rice, not gonna taste like something else because it's still rice. So the coffee is still gonna taste like coffee. And uh, decaf or not, it, it should taste relatively the same, all right. If not heavier, actually, uh, when it, when you do decaf coffee, you actually want to brew it longer so it has that taste. And this is why I use the Turkish way of, of cooking coffee because they their coffee is strong. Now, since I already taste the the coffee au lait, I can kind of give you uh, some, uh, I guess, review uh, what I think of it. Uh, the coffee is a dark roast very 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 dark dark roast okay you can taste it and the thing about dark roast is that uh, right away you can tell the coffee is dark roast because it's supposed to be not so good of a roast it's not a good quality coffee bean and um, that's why they dark roast it that's the only reason why anybody will dark roast any coffee to cover out the bat the bat part of the coffee so um why i remove that noise so, 
you can taste it right away. The coffee isn't like top of the notch coffee, but it's got this after bite of the, the taste to it. Somewhat sweet almost, but then you can taste a, a, a distinct bitterness to it that actually make this coffee somewhat pleasant to drink. Uh, I think that's the trickery part because it doesn't taste like a coffee per se. It's actually a different flavor of, of, um, of a bitterness. It's a pleasant bitterness. All right. So once you have cream or, or milk in there, it covers it up. It's sweet. So I guess it's a good combination. Like it's a special way to make coffee taste better than it's worth. Um, it, I, I didn't buy this cheap. I bought this like nearly $20. So it, it does cost quite a bit. I think it was like 16 or 17 before shipping and stuff. So what I think of this coffee, if you like bitter coffee, like dark, dark, dark roast coffee, and then you just like the flavor uh, of it, then sure. I can tell you that this coffee after I taste it, it's definitely speci especially made for coffee au lait. Uh, it's not meant to be drinking black because, uh, yeah, like I'm reading back here right now. It says each cup of boiling fresh brew coffee with equal amount of hot homogenized milk will suit the taste. Yeah. So you definitely want to add milk to this because uh, it itself, the taste is so broke apart that it needs something creamy to balance it. So, so far, Cafe au lait. Uh, probably a five or six out of ten. Uh, not particular uh, good coffee, but it wasn't bad. It was, you know, if you're from the region, you probably like it. But for someone that drinks a lot of coffee, you can tell that it is a bad coffee with ad with added things to it to make it a better coffee. So it was bad coffee to add more stuff to get a better coffee. So um, that's what that's what's gonna be. That's what's gonna be. All right. Um, so if you want to try this, uh, I'm pretty sure you can get uh, you can get caffeinated or decaffeinated. It doesn't matter because it's dark roast coffee. All you gotta taste is the roasting, the French roast, uh, the, the the dark smoky taste to it. So uh, not gonna change much, decaf or not. All right. So let's see. Let's catch on the on the. Message, not much about me, everybody. Um, uh, Chris, we're not going to talk tonight, it's Saturday. We usually talk, we usually talk on Wednesday, right? Unless you got something different to talk about today. So, um, I don't think anything happening today, particularly. Anyways, so let's cut this up. Let's start smoking. Everybody post what you have smoking tonight. You know, it is a Saturday night. We should all be smoking something, right? You know, everybody's talking about Bird Box. I have no idea uh, what's about Bird Box. I know I saw it on Netflix, but I didn't watch it because I, all I saw was a female on a boat with eye blindfold. So I didn't, I didn't go deep into it. Sun grown, sun grown has that really fresh smell to it. It's actually very, very pleasant. We'll see if this is pretty good. You know, Podomo champagne is known to be light, but this one, we'll find out if it's light. It's got cracks everywhere because uh, it's got through a lot of beating. This one went through a lot of beating. It was in the package that I received with a lot of cigar for me to try, and this one was just like, longer than the rest and then it's taking some beating during the shipment process but it's not gonna stop me from smoking it so is it a movie or is it a tv show it looks like a tv show to be honest all right let's go Let's go. Oh. Crown head reserve 
what did I say? 18th? Oh. And so it's a movie. All right. I've been watching this Korean show called uh, Return to Alhambra. It's a Korean TV show about somebody made a virtual reality video game that end up can really kill you. So uh, it's almost like a combination of all the anime that has to do with the video games combined. So I've been watching that. A lot stronger than a typical Perdomo uh, champagne. A lot, a lot stronger. The initial flavoring for the sun grown is much, much more intense. A little bit of pepper in there. Woodsy and coffee. Uh, Definitely a medium, medium cigar, medium uh, strength cigar for sure. It's very like the, all the taste is like kind of merged together at first. So I haven't picked out specific taste to it yet, but you can taste the pepper is there. There's some pepper there. And tobacco, a little bit woodsy at the end. Hey, Michael. Nice, nice, definitely good. Uh, let's see. You know, I should really move this, uh, the, the message to the left side, I mean the right side, because I'm looking on the right side, but it's showing that I'm looking at the left side, but it's actually on my right side. Very peppery, very peppery uh, cigar so far you know, when it starts. You can really tell it's there, uh, pretty good draw despite of all the thing I just had to glue up right now. Tobacco, a little bit woodsy, a little bit of dry, uh, a dry taste to it. We'll find out if it gets better. And now I'm gonna try the, the, the latte to see if it, uh, it changes anything for me. So yeah, chicory coffee, a lot more enjoyable when you have good amount of milk in there. It really needs to separate all those tastes, the layers of taste, so that you can get the sweet, get the bitter, get the coffee taste to it. When you drink it black, it's just such intense flavor of coffee, like almost burnt taste to it, that there was nothing much that you can taste, unless you like that kind of taste. Uh, when it's coffee au lait, there's no foam that's breaking apart, it's just milk uh, that really, kind of just make it bitter part bitter, sweet part sweet. So when you have it in the latte form, it, it, it really kind of move, moves together. So the foam is sweet, the, uh, the drink itself is somewhat bitter and then mix it together so it gets that medium taste. Uh, so I recommend if you gotta drink this coffee, make it into a latte rather than uh, drinking black or just standard coffee. I just got a message of some sort. Something just popped up. Something just popped up and I don't know where it is from. But we'll continue. No biggity. Da -da 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 -da. Wait, where's that screen? Where are you? There we go. We're back again. So Michael's, my cloud is here. Uh, Michael is here. Jason's here. Christina is here. I just saw Christina. You know, Christina, how did you? There we go. That way I can always catch Christina. The sun grown tobacco taste uh, is really intense in this one. I, I, if once you pass the pepper, it can really taste the 
the, the leaf, the leafy taste to it, the, the, uh, the tobacco uh, flavor to it. So if you like Perdomo Champagne and you want more, I think this is that version. This is just basically the champagne with more intensified taste and strength. So Christina, I am smoking the Perdomo Reserve Champagne Sangro. So while I'm doing this, I'm still enjoying the cigar and letting it kind of work in. I want to mention a few things. Uh, number one is that I want to let everybody know making the video is actually a lot of work. All right, making the video, getting the equipment set up, like lighting and everything is a lot of work. And that reminds me, I didn't turn on that light. I'm gonna turn on the light in, the, in like two minutes. But uh, when let's say if you make really good videos, right? You make really, really, really good videos for yourself. That's good. Everybody loves to watch you. That's fine. But don't go criticize other people's video because for other people, they are trying as hard as they could to make good video. I'm talking about video maker, right? Somebody that makes their own videos. Uh, you know, if somebody makes their own video, everybody has different opinions on, on, on cigars and stuff like that. If you don't agree with them, don't make a video, uh, don't make a post, don't make something to bash another video maker saying that their vid video is full of crap. Uh, it's just non-ethical, you know? You know, you started somewhere, somebody else started somewhere, and not everybody's gotta be good, you know? I don't mind if somebody wanna bash me, but, you know, as a video maker, as someone that makes a lot of video and has that many fans, it's really damaging when you say something about and have an opinion about another video maker. That's just not cool. I just wanna put it out there, so. I'm not gonna put names out there, but it happened, and that when I read it, I wasn't too happy, so, you know. If you're a good video maker, that's fine. You do your thing. But don't go out and criticize another uh, uh, another YouTuber or something like that about things they make or however they make. Because they have their own style, their information, not yours. You do you, they do them. All right? Just not cool to comment about another video player, uh, another media ma maker, unless you're being, uh, you know, supportive. We should be all be supportive of each other, you know? It's, it's something that we make. Uh, out, out of the kindness of our heart, you know, just don't go out and just say, you know, bad things. Especially like, you know, you got your own, like a huge crowd of fans, you know, it just, it can really sway people's minds sometimes, you know, I just don't feel people should do that, so. <laughs> exactly. I got I got calendar with plume. A box of zero, uh, in a quantity of zero. Price nine hundred dollars. One second. Just turn on the light so that I don't turn too dark. You know, I usually don't like that light on my face because it blinds me. But now I turn it on just because it's kind of dark. <laughs> hey, Martin. Um. So yeah, encourage other people to watch other people's video, but don't go out and bash people. Why? You know, just if you don't like it, don't watch it. You know, uh, that's just one of the things. Especially using names, I don't like to criticize people using names. All right, because if I'm gonna criticize somebody, I think that they know who they are, so I don't have to use the name, right, or description of any kind, to to say who who did that. It's it just that I just want to put it out there. So if you ever jump into, like, fall into this video by any chance, you know it's you. Right? You know it's you. And just chill. Just chill. Just chill. Right? Just chill. Anyways, continue smoking. All the good. Gotta have the good vibe, right? Gotta have a good vibe. You know, this cigar, everything kind of blends together. It's hard to say a specific taste to it because everything is so like together, right? You get this one taste and it's like, oh, it's kind of like, like this, like that, but it's really just one taste aside from the pepper. 
We'll see if this get better though. <laughs> All right, so a few other things. So Martin Amaya releases uh, videos on Mondays. So look forward to Monday. I hope. <laughs> look forward to Monday. Uh, Bob the Cigar Guy released his uh, video about his number two and number one cigar together. So if you want to know, go watch that too later. Uh, I watched it, so he he gets uh, he has bonus section on that video too. And good thing is that we we gain two more subscribers to this channel not doing the time the video is on. So that's that's a good thing, you know, I go out and go, hey, we have 133, uh, 136 people. So it's like, okay, where that came from? That's pretty good. You know, I really wanna just share the channel to everybody, you know, it doesn't have to be Cigars Daily members and uh, just everybody who is willing to chat about the hobby, you know, feel free to come in. Uh, I do wanna limit the giveaway to Cigars Daily members. So, you know, you know they could always just join Cigars Daily later on uh, nation to, to be qualified to win the, the giveaway and I, I, I you know I have to say I have to thank a lot of uh, cigar daily members who has donated a lot of cigars to me to give away so you can look forward to have a lot of cigars that I'm give away uh, a lot of cigars that I was given to try either they come in twos or they come in multiples so when they come in twos I'm gonna smoke one and then let everybody know how it is and one lucky member is gonna be able to get the other one I, I was send it out for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's such a. How does how does uh, you know how like when you have chocolate and milk and you mix them together become chocolate milk? It doesn't taste like chocolate or milk kind of thing. It's like that right now for this cigar. Uh, it's like woodsy and uh, you know a little bit of coffee like milk coffee but not like this coffee lighter coffee uh, and pepper together a little hint of sweet at the end too so and then it's just like overall this like really fragrant taste to it but it's together it's not separate it's, you, you can't, it's hard to pick it out so I mean, like Damon said, it's good vibe, bro. There's no drama zone, but I, I'm, I appreciate drama. Drama is good. It makes life exciting and everything. But let's not do a negative drama. Let's do a, you know, a positive drama, right? Let's do like a happy thing. Uh, the pepper. White pepper. It's more white pepper. It's more of white pepper. And then one another reason I get a decaf is because life is on 9 p.m. If I drink caffeinated version, I will never go to sleep. I'll be on. I'll be you know. I wake until the next morning, and I have to complain. <laughs> I'll have to complain. You know, I tried to change my gamer tag to Soy Sauce Assassin, but because the name's so long, it became Soy Sauce Ass. So I had to change it again. I, after I changed to Soy Sauce Ass, I had to change it to SS Assassin. No Manila in this. There's no Manila in this one. No Manila. I don't taste any Manila. And by the way, uh, for New Year's Eve, we're doing the live early, okay? We, it will be 7, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm going to be smoking the Chef special thing, uh, the Chef edition of Davidoff. And I'm thinking to give away one too. So uh, make sure to join. If it comes out to be good, I'll give one out. I have a whole box. Might as well give one out, right? So. 
my nose is kind of running a little bit because of the pepper. It goes to my nose. <laughs> it's like, I want to sneeze, but I can't sneeze. So, eh. Yeah, definitely white, pe white pepper. It lingers a little bit, so. Overall, it's okay. It's, it's not too bad right now. It's more like a... At this length, at the current flavor, it's more like a nine to ten dollar cigar. But I think this one's more expensive because of the length. So we'll continue to see if the the flavor kind of intensify because right now it's so long. It takes so long to travel and then pick up taste and everything. So we'll see if uh, you know it intensify. Because when you smoke something this long, right, all the flavor gets filtered, right? Because all these leaves act as a filter before it reaches you. So by the time you get to a certain part, that filter with the intensified filter taste is gonna intensify the taste. That's how the taste gonna change as you go. So hopefully by the time it gets here, all the one that got kind of filtered through became part of the taste. It's gonna intensify the flavor and it gets better. We'll see if it gets better. But yeah, uh, it was a bad choice to, to, to type all out. The game will allow you to type the whole name, but when it displays, it displays only partial. So that, that got me to become soy sauce ass. I'm still looking for, uh, you know, submission on the, on the drawing and stuff like that. Like at this point, I'm not gonna limit you to draw just a soy sauce can looking like ninja. You can draw whatever that is cute to you, that has that would imply soy sauce assassin. Then I'm good with that. My wife also suggested to do the same thing that uh, Tim is doing for his labels, uh, to use 99 whatever. Uh, I'm not gonna get the whole whole website out there. 99 whatever. And uh, so basically, there were a lot of people to s submit to win the bid. So he put out like, this is how much money I'm willing to pay. The winner gets that much money and then it gets that. So that that might be what I do too if I can't find one that's cute enough to, to make a sticker uh, to give away or something like that. I wanna do something like that. It'll be fun. Uh, also, I wanna talk about Rabbit Air again. So it's, as a continued review, uh, so I had it running all night last night again. I come down this morning, there's no smell. Absolutely zero. So. If you want to keep one of these units in the basement, just don't turn it off. Just don't turn it off. Whatever room that you're in, just don't turn it off. It continues to cycle the air. It's actually pretty good. For this 700 square feet area, it does a pretty good job. Now, I had you mentioned that because I put it over here, the door is over there. Sometimes it kind of leaks out to the door a little bit. So I'm actually looking to just move this near the door. So so long as it doesn't go through the door, I think uh, it's doing its job. So I might move that to the other side. There is more, a uh, slightly more dust. There is slightly more dust, but it's, it's not like the first day where there's so so much of it. Uh, there's so little that you can see bits here, bits here, and that was it. That was it. So you know the ion does do its work um, to keep the smoke down, but uh, it also you know the bad part is the dust will come down. So uh, I haven't gone through to vacuum this area. Once I vacuum this year, I can tell whether or not there's gonna be more or less. So it's a continued review, continuous review of this rapid air. I'm gonna do this whole review continuously throughout the year of 2019. And you know, also go through the cleaning the filter and then cost of, uh, you know, all that stuff. And then we can see whether or not you can, and then by then you have saved $500 to buy a unit, you know, it's two dollar a day, right? A year later, you have you can buy one and have change to buy some more cigar. So, so far, right now, immediately, I see a big change. So, I think right now it's a good it's a good investment. It's it's not a bad investment. Uh, just turning to JDM, about to throw some fire on it. JDM. Not sure what a JDM is. So today I also adjust the microphone again. So it's further away from me. It's gonna pick up less of this noise. 
uh, I noticed that the noise is also in uh, Tim's streaming. So I just want to see if uh, what do you guys think? Is it loud enough? Is it too little? Do I have to make it louder? What do you guys think? hear me as well as usual okay so let's uh let's just crank it up a little bit how about that is it better but now you can hear the fan so i'm gonna crank it down a little bit there we go i think that's as good as that's gotta be my wife basically mentioned that she can smell it in the hallway so whatever that leaks up it's gotta be it's gotta go it's gotta go up so that's this is why I want to move that unit over there I'm, I might mount it on the wall actually uh, only because smoke travels up you really have to have a high place to to really pick up the smoke let it run and everything unless I have it run a high all the time which I don't recommend anyway so um, we'll, we'll, we'll try we'll continue to try I'll move it around as I go right now I think over in this area, I have done enough tests. I want to move to another area to see if it gets better. Um, too much fan now? How about that? Now, my microphone is not showing moving, and I expect that when it's not moving, uh, it's not picking up as much background noise as, it, as needed. Bye, Christina. So, I'm just looking at the, the meter jumping up and down to see if it, you know, it picks up fan. Another choice is to move the microphone much closer to me, which I might. We'll see what happens. Uh, right now, it's in a good distance. I don't want you guys to hear me like too much. Uh, it's some adjusting, uh, adjusting still need to be made. And I'm thinking to uh, do my YouTube show here, but Facebook show back in my desk again. So we'll see how that works out. Okay, a little bit more taste coming over through. I can taste a little bit more tobacco now. So we'll see if it gets up. Your volume all the way up here. So on mine, it shows the volume is in the green section, not too much yellow because when it's yellow, it kind of starts to break apart. So. Oh, okay. Mike, I'm drinking this uh, Cafe du Monde uh, chicory coffee. It's suggested by Glenn. So, and basically, it's bad coffee made good. And you really can't drink this black because it's not just, it's not gonna taste that good. At least for me, uh, I didn't find that taste good black. And even in the bag, it suggests that you go with equal amount of milk. So it's a, it's a lower quality coffee bean made into a dark roast and then add chicory, which kind of give it a little bite and then a little bit more sweet taste to it. And you kind of really had to balance with some milk and cream. So if you like dark roast and you want something different, that's one of the one way to get something different in dark roast. But I gotta say before, if you get a dark roast, it's definitely 100% of the time lower quality coffee. So don't get dark roast. Uh, if, if you want a smoky coffee, yes, then you like the char chalky taste. It's not chalky taste, but more like dark, smoky taste. Then yes, you can go with the uh, uh, dark roast. But a lot of coffee uh, and uh, regular roast, uh, French roast, coffee can give you the same taste without being dark roast it's really the dark roast is to mask the taste from bad quality coffee i wonder if they make a regular medium roast of chicory so I will, i'll give that a try but then it kind of makes no sense to be chicory with regular uh, high quality coffee because 
there was no need to mask that flavor. It, it feels like they add chicory to mask that flavor. French donuts, 24 hours a day. Yeah, it says coffee au lait over here. It's serving coffee au lait. So this is meant to serve with milk. It's not meant to be drinking black. Don't drink it black. It doesn't taste that good. Yes, uh, that's correct. When it's dark roast, a lot of caffeine already got cooked off. The more you caffeine is something that's sensitive to temperature. So the harder it is, the more steam they go through, and, and you know, because when you cook the beans, the, the, the moisture gets cooked off, all right? So the decaf process is actually just add water and cook off that steam again. And it's not gonna get rid of any taste. It's just, you know, the way the, the roast is. Uh, the longer you roast, you're actually burning the beans, and they basically add water and burn away the, the, the caffeine. So for those people who say, ah, oh, it's decaf, you shouldn't be drinking. No, it's the same taste, just no caffeine. When you prep coffee correctly, it's always got to taste with good aroma, you know, decaf or not. You know, people will not, the company's not going to make a decaf just uh, it's when it's going to significantly affect the taste. Decaf does not affect that taste that much. A lot of time, uh, because you go through a regular dripper, uh, caf coffee cooking process, you might get less. But for me, I cook them in the Turkish cooking coffee way in a pot, little, little teacup to boil many times until, you know, the aroma are soaked in to, to get all the taste. So uh, for me, it's not going to make a difference between decaf or not because it's going to give me the same taste. Okay. A little bit more floral uh, aroma start to come out from this sun grown, all right? A very soft floral aroma, uh, pleasant. A little bit more tobacco, creamy. Uh, so far that's it, so far that's it. Papa Fritas is basically the cheapo Liga number no. 9. So it is made out of whatever that's left over from Liga number no. 9. So obviously you're getting $6 for a Liga-esque uh, cigar. So you got to get similar flavor, not necessarily the full flavor, and still a good cigar. So for that price, I think that's totally worth it. Um, people who think Liga number nine is too much. Uh, Liga T fifty two is too much. Then go with the Papa Fritas. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I like I like those small ones in the tank tank. Those it's gonna give you the flavor right away without that much uh, power to it. So totally worth it. Uh, you know you can bet that when I go to Tim, I'm gonna buy a, a little bit back for sure. That's something that you should keep in there. Uh, humidor is as a quick smoke. Totally totally a good beater. Absolutely a good beater. But I will do a I'll do a review when I get one back. I think I have one somewhere upstairs. How many people want to see uh Liga number nine review here? Does anybody want to see Liga number nine review here? I'm pretty sure Liga number nine is like famous enough that everybody knows, but I, I haven't done one. I do have one in like a I think it's Churchill size or Toro size, the big one that I can do review on if you guys want to see that. And as you guys can see, Chris sent me another, uh, we got, got two more Muas and two more uh, Camachos to review. Basically, I'm gonna smoke one and give one out. So we have one Muwa to give out and one Camacho, uh, Camacho to give out. So I'm gonna smoke those soon so I can give them away. Cool, 
Trishan, you can stay on, on, on the on the show while you're walking so that if you get kidnapped, you, we, we all know you got kidnapped. We'll, we'll call 911 for you if it works today. Because yesterday, all day, all the cell phone has no 911 signal. <laughs> I can honestly tell you the T-52 is just like the number 9, but stronger, more peppery, uh, significantly more peppery, but it's pretty much the same thing, pretty much the same thing. And I can tell you off, off the bat that, T, uh, that Liga number 9 is worth the hype, it is pretty good, but it is slightly more pricey. For my liking, it's a little bit more pricey than I like. So yeah, um, I'm kind of excited because that Tim is carrying a lot of Vegas and and other good stuff slowly so it'll be more accessible to people that want to buy them i'm pretty sure eventually he'll run to a uh, case with a lot of stores where they don't have enough supply so well, hopefully, hopefully that's, that's gonna, gonna balance out with, with the way he, he does business because uh, a lot of time i see things for example the davidoff uh cigarellos not cigarellos but the, the small primeros uh run out and doesn't come back for a while so hopefully uh, there's enough supply for everybody because the Guardian Nation is quite big, you know, a few thousand people. So, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll send assassins, assassins in need. All the assassins will dress in bathing suits so that if you can't identify them, they will be in bathing suits. Uh, their weapon will be suicide uh, with, the, with the bathtub as cape. That way it's easy to identify. Much easier to identify. You can know right away. Oh, those people in bathing suits with their mind with the face closed. They're holding soy sauce. Yes, it's the soy sauce assassin league. Is there an echo? So there is an echo. Okay. Better now? How, How about, about that? that? Worse? I think it's a fan, actually. I did turn down the volume, so... Let me see uh, if there's any issues. Kind of weird. How about now? Is it bad? Is it better? I don't, I don't have a playback, playback on mine. Uh, I, I actually, actually don't, don't have a playback, playback on mine. How about now? Is it, is it gone? Is, is, is it still, still have an echo? echo? So, so the echo is gone. gone. Worse. Way worse. Okay, okay so, so now, now there's, there's, a, there's, there's issues. issues. Uh, let, let me see if I turn this, this off. Bam! Oh, 
How's that? I should really run a, a good test on it. Um, yay. So I turn back to the microphone that's on my laptop. So it's not using the regular microphone. Uh, see if that fixes it. Let me do this. That. Mute. Way better. Okay. So let me test this too. Uh, I just muted the system's uh, microphone. And I'm going to try this again. How about now? If it gets worse, let me know. Because uh, I can't hear myself. Maybe I should use the headset. But, you know, if I use headset. No? Echo. Alright. So I kind of have an idea what's going on. But for now, let's, uh, bam. My uh, laptop's microphone is not on. Uh, right now, I changed the webcam microphone. So there's a small distance now. So I, I don't know. I have to kind of tune this thing. Uh, every time, even though I didn't change much, it's, it makes a lot of difference for simply not doing anything. So. But now I changed the microphone. Is it better now? I wonder what happened. I did change the bit rate so that uh, when it stream, uh, it, it's not it's not buffering. I think the noise came from basically the fan and uh, every setup that's doing here and because this room is relatively big, uh, it's going to have a little echo here and there. But I'll continue to refine the, refine the microphone, of course. Uh, maybe the, the situation where it is on is bad. It was working great and the mid-sentence changed. So it could be something from YouTube. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, hopefully it gets better. Hopefully it gets better. Right now I changed another one. Yeah, I, I have to be able to hear myself and so far I can't. So I really have to sit down one day and use a headphone on it and then and just really test it out. As I add more stuff, things get more complicated. So I think that, that that's the, really the issue. All right, a little bit more sweet cocoa that goes go through right now. Uh, it's almost like a typical uh, Dominican taste to it, Dominican uh, in there. So. A little bit of Connecticut wrapper taste to it, but more intense, more of a solid, I don't know, manly flavor, you think? Yeah, and tobacco taste, uh, but nothing specially that I can point out, uh, nothing like particularly special about this. I think it's because champagne lines are known to, to be kind of light. There's not much to it. Other than the, the wrapper, the sun grown uh, wrapper, it really didn't change much in the inside. And see. So. So let's talk about. 
well, there's a few topics I want to talk about, but I'm kind of wondering which one will be the best to talk about because some of them are related to our society nowadays, but people's point of view on it is kind of controversial. It's kind of controversial. Uh, stuff like the wall, all right? So remember I question about like how people have so much money to donate to the wall, there's like $4 million already collected. And the government basically say, no, we can't use it. You guys collected all those donations, government cannot use it. So uh, what do you guys think? I mean, some people are really intensified about the wall, but do you really think that wall is necessary? By the way, uh, Martin, I, I'm in smoking the Perdomo Reserve Champagne Sun Grill. So I feel like at this point, it's just a stronger version of, this, uh, of the Champagne line. Nothing too special about it. But as, uh, as I continue to smoke, we'll see if that gets better. Rocky Patel 1990 Vintage is, is definitely good, good smoke. <clears throat> One of the good ones from Rocky Patel, for sure. You know, we have people from the our region right now. What do you guys think? Do we really need a physical wall? Do we really need a physical wall? Or do we should use that money to just, you know, 21st, 21st century, 22nd century technology to, to really deal with the immigration issue? $12 million and, and, and counting to, you know, to supplement the wall the government decided not to use it. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a just, you know, simple. Do you think we need the wall or not? Not necessarily like saying that you know the government should have the wall, because uh, in my opinion, having the wall or not doesn't change anything. Because I don't get to decide whether or not the wall is going to be built. I don't get to decide whether or not the government gets to shut down or not. I don't get to decide whether or not you know we even have a say in the amount of cost for the wall, right? So, for me, it's more like whatever, whatever. But I'm really interested to see because so many. The, obviously, there's a lot of people support for the wall, so that uh, there is money there, right? People are pitching in money. That's a lot of money. Twelve million dollars. You can spread, spread out. That's quite a bit of money, right? I, I highly doubt there's one person that says. Here's one million dollars, and twelve people did that. No, there's a lot of people that did that. So, besides, if your friend cannot handle your political opinions, that that you know, that's a little iffy there, right? Being a friend, we gotta understand we all have different political point of views, and you know, agree to disagree kind of thing. That's why it is, you know, it's the world. You know, some people like coffee, some people hate coffee. Some people like cigars, some people hate cigars. You're not gonna stop smoking cigars just because you hate, your friend hates it. Your friend isn't gonna stop being a friend with you just because you smoke a cigar. Chinese Great Wall did not stop anybody from coming in just so, so you know, we can say that. If I say I agree with the wall, I'm considered racist. No, I, why is you? Why are you a racist? Because you support the wall. What's the wall has to do with the race? Is is America not filled with different races? I mean, the wall is only in the Mexico border. It, it, that's a, you know, are you racist just towards? No, how can you say somebody's racist towards Mexicans just because they had a wall in the border? We also wanted a wall everywhere else. Too, so China had a great wall, multiple great walls. And doesn't you know doesn't make them cool, racist. It's just wall. Mm. I highly agree with that. Jason Martins. The money that collected could really be used for the vets. Could really be used for the vets. You know, we continuously I don't know if you guys ever received those phone calls where the Veterans Association is looking for donations. The question is why do they even need donations? Right? When somebody needs donation, that means whatever the funding they have is not enough. That means our government is not doing a good job giving those money out because they're veterans. They serve the country. They serve the country, right? 
They give up their life. Like imagine if I just say tomorrow you're drafted to war. You'll be like, I'm totally not ready to that. I have a family, I have home, I have places that I want to do. I, I, I have bills I want to pay. I don't want to go uh, and serve in the military. But they did that. So shouldn't you think that the veterans should have more than enough money to do everything? If they don't, our government is not doing the right thing. That's my opinion. All right. So people might not agree with me, but I think the veterans should have everything taken care of. And when I say everything means they should have the shelter take care of. They should definitely have food. So they should have like a, I don't know, food stand for every food possible, right? They should be enjoying those food for the rest of their life. And they should have medical care, immediate medical care. I'm talking about immediate medical care. Like if I'm sick at this moment, I should be able to phone call, a doctor should show up at my, my house, right? They do that in UK, why can't we do it here? I don't understand. Most powerful country in the world, self-claim, um, cannot take care of their own vets. That's a problem. And then we're spending money on everything else. And where veteran associations actually have to ask for donation to keep the program going and do I I almost feel like, you know, why is why is the veteran have to do the same thing as like make a wish foundation to give to whatever the veterans need? I think vets should get special treatment. All right, I'm not a particular uh, person. Like I don't know a lot of vets, but I feel like the few people that really need support uh, is people that save your life, right? So firemen and police and uh, military vets and uh, you know. Maybe some medical, I think the medical world is making too much money anyway, but they're not giving it down. So the, the obviously the hospital owners and uh, drug pharmaceuticals, they need to be controlled. The, the, the pharmaceuticals are making a shitload amount of money, and, but then the people who are serving like the EMT and stuff like that, they're not making enough money for sure. Uh, you think the doctor makes a lot of money? They make hundreds of grand a year? Look how much debt they have. Look how much debt they have from student loans and all that stuff. Then you will know, you think that, you will know at least the first 10 years, they make less than 30 grand a year after every expenses. That's the thing, you know, not getting too overly political. I just think that our government is not doing enough for the vets. You're putting so much money in military, right? That's a lot of money, 50 something billion in military funds. You're buying weapons that we don't use, so they expire, they go nowhere. But the vets are waiting for help, food, shelter, all that stuff, but we're not giving to them? Like, I shouldn't, I should never, never, ever see a homeless vet. That should be like number one, right? So. I mean, Technical, uh, technically talking about veterans is not really political. I think everybody in this place agree that veterans should get should get enough help. So I, I think vets deserve special treatment. And I'm not even a vet, so I think vets deserve special treatment. And I don't even call that special treatment because because of them we got special treatment. So for them, they should get a lot of treatment. Anyways, hey Bob, what is going on, Bob? Did you like my little gift? Yeah, that, that's what I mean by like, I don't know if I should talk about it because uh, a lot of things now in the world is not, 
It's too much problem. It's too much problem. <laughs> the Goka. The Goka. Oh my god, the Goka. Uh, being honest with you, I got sick again after smoking that Goka. I, I had to sleep in because I didn't feel well after the Goka. The Goka, I'm done with Goka Ghost forever. I'm done with Goka Ghost. It just doesn't, it doesn't go with my body. My body automatically rejects it. My DNA rejects Goka. Look forward to the review. I think Bob will be very excited about those two reviews. So, nah, I don't think Bob want to review Cubans. Bob, do you want to review Cubans? Come on, I don't think Bob want to review Cubans. It's just the same thing over, 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 over again. It's blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Cubans. But yeah. Let's talk about a few questions that we saw on the on the Cigar Daily Nation. How about that? Let's look through Cigar Daily Nation and let's tr address some of the some of the questions that we have on Cigar Daily Nation. How 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 about that? How's that sound? I think that's not political and I think that's good. So let's go down. Cigar Daily Nation. Woo! Cigar Daily Nation without, without echoes. Echoes go away. So we have Tim Tr Hauser on Cigar Daily Nation basically say, I need some advice. What's a great beginner cigar that I can stock for my friend? And I don't want to give out my good rich cigars too. They are new smoking, some tasty, but not too expensive for the new guys. And I say that guy needs to watch some of my videos because he did not watch any videos. It could have been easily resolved with that same one video watched. So moving forward. Uh, let's look. Because I did see a few questions earlier today and I kind of want to address them. I just can't remember what it is, right? Uh, Oh, let's address this. Bovita packs. Everybody in this use Bovita pack, right? <clears throat> Let me catch up on some of the messages. Uh, beer. Oh god, yeah, people are just way overreacting for Cuban. It's uh, hater is going to hate. That's right. So let's talk about Bovida pack. Everybody uses Bovida pack, right? Some people don't, but I know most people use Bovida pack. And I vacuum seal some cigars when I send out, and there are a few cigars that I feel like is a little too dry, so I put a Bovida pack in there. Now people are arguing that Bovida pack needs air to work. It needs uh, circulation of air to work. Uh, it doesn't. It needs moisture to work. Okay, just so we know. Even in vacuum sealed condition, cigars still have air in it. Okay, there's still gotta be pockets of air. Even the pack itself has pockets of air. So when you vacuum seal a, a cigar, you still need to have Bovida pack in there. Even in vacuum seal condition, your cigar can still mold too, all right? Know that. Mold can grow with very, 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 very little air. We're talking about like, you know, like a, that's it, air. That's it. That much air can grow mold. Mold does not need a lot of air. Mold can, mold can survive in vacuum seal condition. If you don't believe it, try to buy a pack of something that's vacuum sealed, leave it there long enough, it will mold. Because uh, the moisture and the air inside uh, the material that you're using is enough for mold to grow. So, if you are vacuum seal a cigar, it's safe to put a 
pack of Bovida packages. It will work. It will work. It doesn't need that much air, right? It worked by, it, it's the law of diffusion, right? Science doesn't lie. The, the law of diffusion will always move moisture to balance total moisture, right? So uh, if this thing is supposed to be 65% moisture relative to humidity, it will make the surrounding that it can touch to be 65% uh, uh, humidity. Hi, Jonathan. So if somebody say Bovida pack needs air to work, then you have a nice, nicely sealed uh, humidor you're screwed because air doesn't move in there. It just sits there. Right? There's no movement. So any amount of air, Bovida pack will work. You're not gonna be able to reach an absolute vacuum in any home used vacuum unit because that literally just means you have to pancake everything. You gotta pancake everything to get all the air out. The air will still have pockets, all right? Especially when you have cigars. There's gotta be air inside the cigar. Unless you crush your cigars, you're not gonna be able to get all the air out. And just so you guys know, there's another way to vacuum seal your things, okay? Uh, you can vacuum seal your zipper bag by putting inside water. So water pressure will push the air inside a bag out. So if you sink enough water into enough water, the bottom of the air is gonna come out because air travel out from water. And then you can just seal the bag right at the tip where the water is. You back and seal that bag. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Osmosis? <laughs> oh god. So yeah. So if you have some cigars you want to vacuum seal, that's one way to do it. Uh, you can vacuum seal your cigars that way. Uh, usually you will vacuum seal cigars for a few reasons. You want to uh, uh, travel to a different temperature zone. All right, if you want to travel to a different, different temperature zone, you can vacuum seal your cigar. If you think that your cigar has beetles, vacuum seal that thing, put it inside a, a, a freezer, a freezer for a little bit. That's going to reduce the amount of moisture that's going to move around. And... Do, 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 do. Bovida Pack is the only manufacturer without technology. With what technology? Uh, Bovida Pack is very system to, to use that because it normalizes. If it's over target humidity, it removes humidity in the environment. The target as a. Okay. So, Bob. Anybody can make a Bovida Pack, believe it or not. Anyone can manufacture a Bovida Pack. Uh, to be really honest with you, Bovida Pack is a standard mixture of salt and chemicals. Uh, that's not harmful. Obviously, it's just different kind of salt. To make uh, same thing as uh, it's the same thing as the salt test. When you do a salt test, right, you get seventy five percent. So if you add different mixture of salt in there, you can get to that percentage that you want. So inside is actually salt, breathable layers, and paper. And that same that paper outside is the same as money, kind of kind of kind of cloth, all right. So uh, if you put money in the in, in the water and pour it out, it, it feels the same thing as if you put a bovida pack in there. So basically, uh, uh, anybody can technically make a homemade bovida pack. Uh, it just you have to know the mixture of salt and, and like things like sugar and stuff like that. Basically, you need to have the correct mixture to get that sixty five percent, sixty nine percent, seventy two percent. Standard salt gets you seventy five percent, and it's science. It will always work. Okay, it will always work. You want me to cut one open? I can cut one open. Anybody want to see one open? Anybody want to see one open? I can open one right here because they're not toxic. So I, I'm more than happy to open one up here. All right. Give me two minutes. 
I'll go grab a Bovita pack, I'll open it up here to kind of give you, I kind of explain what Bovita pack is, really is like. All right, be right back. By the way, while I'm smoking, I can really smell the cigar when I come down. So, uh, while that, that thing is working, you can smell the cigar. Okay, for science, all right, let's cut one open. I, unfortunately, I don't have one that's completely wet or dry. So, I am going to cut one that's semi-wet. All right, give me a sec. For science, let's cut one open. What cigar pairs well with pizza and beer? That depends how many beer you already have. If you already have two beers, any cigar is good. Ready? This is all that is that's inside. Uh, maybe I'll give you a secondary camera. Come on, secondary camera. See that? A salt mixture with a clear layer that's like a mesh. All right. So think of it as a. Think of it as a as a Ziploc bag, right? It's semi-waterproof, but water can still go in through slowly. And then the outside layer is literally just that money mesh paper, all right? So if you feel it by itself, it kind of feel like money. Uh, it's the same thing, it's kind of waterproof, but it's actually cloth paper, all right? See that inside? Nothing special, it's just salt mixture, all right? A different kind of crystallized salt mixture. If you open one up, you kind of feel it. It's like salt. Yeah, it's like salt. See, it's just like salt. Not toxic because it's salt. So, a lot of people is like, um, no, it's special technology. Blah 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 blah. No, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not. Uh, I 
hate to tell you, that is actually salt mesh plastic paper, like a mesh, that keeps the water from uh, going a specific rate, right? So it doesn't, the whole thing doesn't get wet. And outside is the same paper that was used for uh, like money. So it's semi waterproof, okay? Uh, it will dry. Okay, so now this should clear the myth that uh, Bovia pack is, uh, is some sort of special technology. It's not, science works a uh, specific way. Certain things that carry so, so much mixture of moisture all the time uh, that allows to go in and the law, law of diffusion always works. Do they work two way once we charge? Okay, so everything has a maximum amount of, uh, what is that scientific word? Uh, um, there's a maximum amount of things that it can hold. So uh, when you have a mixture that holds 65%, you always want to, law of diffusion, always want to keep it from 65%. So you continue to feed it in until it's outside 65% because it tends to draw, right? And th that's the thing about some material. You put it on your skin, or you put it on a vegetable, and you'll start draw the water out of the vegetable. Now, if you don't believe me, try it. Get a piece of, like, slice of vegetable, put salt on it, water will start to come out. Yeah, all you had to do was soak it in distilled water for a couple of days, get it out, and let the outside layer dry. Inside, like I say, is a mesh plastic, so it's not gonna be wet. But the outside is still like just like money. You put in the water long enough, you'll be wet. But if it's just a couple of drip of water, you actually won't go in. So, so you can technically recharge it, but it doesn't. It doesn't make sense uh, to recharge it too much. You really just have to raise the moisture right level of where you're putting out there. So, for example, if you're really worried, put a cup of, of um, distilled water where you have the Bovia pack, pack. The distilled water is always going to give, right? They only give. It doesn't take in, right? It only gives. So, the air will start to be more than 65% or more than 69% or 72%. And the pack is just going to basically draw those moisture in. When it's full, take it out. You don't really have to soak in water. They were our work. I have cut all of them open before. Um, basically, they all made te technically by Bovia. And then uh, the different item is basically uh, cotton and stuff. Everything has a absolute uh, diffusion level. So the, the, the law of diffusion will always balance everything together. So you're, you're in the room that's you're not going to get one corner that's 65% and the other corner is 75% naturally, right? Because the law of diffusion that work, you always diffuse everything together, right? So the pack is always going to work no matter what, so long as you have the material there. So we're talking about. Same kind of mixture though. Like for example, this is Bovia, but it says Zycar on it. So it's still Bovia. Alright? It's, it's just salt. Okay, um, for Oasis, I do not recommend you use Oasis if you have a small container. If you have a humidor that's holds about 100, even 150, uh, I do not recommend it, all right? Uh, start using that only when you have a 200 and up, 250 and up, that requires the air circulation and requires the water to really go, like right? that. Right? Even that, I still put the Bovita back in there because it could over humidify your, your uh, humidor. All right, talk to you later, Mon.
So, in terms of other kind of packs, there are other kind of packs that only have like a sponge or something in there. That's only one way because you only give out. Yes, because there's no salt and mixture in there. It's just sponge that takes in that moisture. Or the beads that only gives out moisture. There's nothing that will absorb. And the mixture of the salt and whatever takes in moisture. So that's why it works. Uh, you're not going to get water to, to take in water. Water can't take in water. So putting the water out there is always higher than everything else. So it's not going to be, it's not going to get intake, right? That's why Bovida pack works. But in terms of science, there's not much to it. There's not much to it. It's amazing. It's convenient. Thank the Lord they invented it. But, uh, you know, it's one of those like, so simple. Why didn't anybody thought about it and they made it first? How does skinny skin your body? Who who is how does skinny skin your body? Um, I've never seen you on the on the for, uh, on the chat room before. Uh, you wanna let us know who you are? Okay, here we go. That's easy. So yeah, for science, I cut over uh, a bovina pack. So uh, it's, it's just a great way to solve a simple problem. And if you ask me when to use bovina pack, when to use Oasis, I, I, I don't use Oasis. I've seen more moldy uh, humidor with Oasis than not. And I rarely see a moldy one with bovina packs. I actually see more dry uh, condition than a wet condition for for Vita pack. So if you want to like uh, uh, sit in and forget it environment, do for Vita pack. Just buy a whole you know whole box of it and just throw it in whenever it's dry. They're so cheap. If you think about how much it costs you to continuously run the thing, uh, they're, they're much cheaper than let's say Oasis. Oasis continue has to take battery or, or power to I mean electricity to 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 run. So. It's not much cheaper, and it's not the best uh, option unless you have a huge hum humidor, right? Somebody like like Glenn who have a two hundred two thousand count uh, humidor, he will need like those units. He probably need two or three of those units. The Bovida pack is not gonna be enough to draw or release water enough for that. But how do they keep a cigar in good shape one to two hundred years ago? They don't. They don't. Um, Humidor and like the, the fact 70% and 70 degree thing came much, much later. Nobody thought about storing like that for a long time, for a long time. And you're gonna know that back in the days, um, they, they, they don't even, they don't even store down the cigars. You know, people roll the cigars and just go smoke it and that's it, all right? So they, they don't really care about cigar because it was a myth that cigar would go bad at the time. Like, they just smoke it. They smoke it. They, they don't have massive manufacturers that make that much cigars where it needs the requirement of the, you know. And you gotta think that if the cigar is made in a place that's more tropical humidified, just enough. So they don't really think about that. Uh, believe it or not, they don't really think about that. Uh, you know, roll it out, smoke it, that was it. Uh, not many people store boxes and boxes and boxes of cigars that had that problem. It was much, much later when they realized that uh, the best combination was supposed to be 70 70. And even now, today, people still argue 70 70 is not the best uh, 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 zone to be in. You know, it's not, it's not a preferred zone. 65 70 is, or some people say 65 65 is. Uh, even at 70 70, you'll still get mold or still get damage on your cigars. So it's just personal preference. It's personal preference. Some people leave their cigar off for five years and they'll have no problems. So. And my cigar went out. Hey, how about this? Let's talk about cigar lounge etiquette. I, I actually thought about somebody uh, talked about the other day. What is proper cigar lounge etiquette? 
throw in your comments below what do you think is the proper must-have cigar lounge etiquette. That, that that helps new people to, to really go into the cigar lounge because let's, let's face it people first timer go to a cigar lounge it could be intimidating because you have all those people sitting over there smoking uh, maybe chatting with each other but then when you walk in as a new they look at you they're like who just walked in who just walked in and it could be intim uh, intimidating right <laughs> okay, so Bob is right. Uh, when you go to a cigar lounge, if you gotta lick, lick your own chip before you cut it, uh, the cap, don't use a, don't use a uh, cigar lounge cutter. Use your own cutter. Uh, believe it or not, most cigar places once they sell the cigar, they ask you if they want, you want them to cut it. They'll cut it there for you, and that was way before you go. Let me taste that. No, so don't don't put it in your mouth before you cut it. Oh yeah, few things that, yeah, exactly. Some people put the foot in the nose and go, oh, I should not have done that. Bad choice. Anyway, some people put the foot in there and then through the nose to smell it. Bad choice. Don't do that in the lounge unless it's your own cigar. Uh, don't smell the body of the cigar. Uh, you could press the cigar, but don't press too hard and damage it. Uh, that's a bad thing too, yeah. Make sure you don't do that in the cigar lounge. Talk loudly about politics and religion to everyone. Uh, I agree, but that always happens. That always happens. You know it's going to happen in your lounge. People do talk about politics. They do talk about uh, religion. Because why? The lounge always plays news channels. That's the problem. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do not spit. That's gross. Uh, in a, in a, in a non-private environment, if you uh, tend to be a spitter, uh, you don't want to you don't want to be in the lounge. When I feel the cigars at the lounge uh, at the place, um, well, unless it's on wrap, if you wrap, you you just want to do the body, right? Just want to do the body, right? Just feel whether or not the body, you know, because a lot of people do want to see whether or not it's nicely humidified. And if you press the body crack, then you know it's a bad one. So uh, just do the body. Don't do the cap. Don't do the foot. Just do the body. I mean, Cigar Lounge is a place, you got to think of it as a, as a public place, right? So you want to watch what you do and stuff like that. You can bring your own cigar in, that's normal too. But make sure to buy one too. Don't just use the lounge. It's not your home, right? And they ask your business. Make sure you buy a cigar when you're in there. Even if you don't want to smoke that cigar right away, you gotta smoke your own. But still, buy a cigar. Use the location, yes, buy a cigar when you do. I think that's a good etiquette, right? Um, I don't usually borrow other people's lighter, but sometimes I think that People just expect that people just got a long to the lighter is a bad thing too. Uh, when you're in a lounge, you have no lighter, there's always matches that you can use. That's another thing. Don't get hammered in the lounge. That's a good one too. Uh, just like Glenn said, don't get hammered. I mean, there's no point to get drunk that bad before you go. Uh, yeah, don't bring food that smells. Uh, in the lounge, right? Uh, a lot of people will bring their lunch with like tuna, onions, pizza, like some seriously smelly pizza, uh, cheese. Don't. 
You can bring your, like, you know, if you really have to bring your drinks, adapters with it, that's fine. And if they allow alcohol, that's fine too. But don't, don't bring food. Eat before you go. Don't, you know, while everybody's smoking, you're eating, and they all have to smell. Especially Chinese food. I've seen people bring Chinese food in the lounge. What in the world are you thinking about? Nobody needs to smell that dumpling, okay? No one needs to smell that dumpling. No, I kind of think that's wrong. When you spend two hundred dollars on a cigar, they should really allow you to enjoy the lounge as well. Uh, some lounge is just uh, too greedy, in my opinion. Like, you know, I have to pay twenty dollars to use a cigar lounge. That's kind of weird. All right, Bob. Thanks for dropping by. Have a good night. Yeah, that's another thing. People who enjoy cigar don't necessarily enjoy cigarettes. And I've seen a lot of females, they will go in there, smoke a cigar, and then they'll light up. They won't finish the cigar, they'll put the cigar down, and they'll light up a cigarette. Please don't do that, because I don't really want to smell the uh, cigarette smell. So, uh, if you got to smoke a cigarette, walk outside, have your cigarette, because your cigarette is not going to take that long. Come back in and enjoy the cigar again. <laughs> really? Did you really eat curry in the lounge? Did you really eat curry in the lounge? That's horrible. So, today I'm smoking relatively slow. It's one hour and 30 minutes in, and I'm only like, almost half, not even half in. So this is a long cigar. This takes take forever. This is a long cigar. Yeah, do not eat curry in. Now, I, I, don't, remember, I don't like people eat in a cigar lounge, because it's just like, why you try to do, make everybody hungry? Well, uh, you know, drink is okay. I can understand drink. It's kind of unfair or something. So it depends on what they allow there. Uh, you should always have a drink. I have coffee. I have, you know, uh, if they allow to drink something, I will drink something. Uh, to, but then when I want to drink something, if they have a bar there, I'll buy whatever they have in the bar. If they don't, they have business to make money. But if you bring your own drink in the place that I already have a bar, that's kind of weird. Please don't do that. So yeah, for a lot of people going to a lounge for the first time, it will be intimidating, all right? But everybody there is friendly. Like, they're like, oh, come here, sit down. Don't, don't, don't sit down, sit down. You know, they, they, they welcome you. If, I, mean, I mean, there are some people that just stares. I think, don't stare. <laughs> don't stare. I know your experience. You're there to enjoy this guy. But you kind of can scare the noob away. I've seen those where someone new just came in for the very first time. They're about to buy cigars, and they're just looking at the lounge like, oh, can I sit there and just try one? And then you see this group of people just turn over and stare. Right? It's as if you just walk into a mob, uh, mob lounge where they're having a, you know, a meeting of who to hit next, and then you just spot it. Don't do that. Don't scare the noobs. Uh, you know, welcome them in. You know. uh, another thing. This is very important, and uh, I know a lot of times I trash talk a lot of cigars I don't like on, on the stream, okay? If something tastes like shit, I'm going to that thing tastes like shit, all right? But that's in a private setting. When you go to a lounge, somebody's smoking a cigar that you don't like, please don't tell them that they're smoking shit. Please don't tell them that that thing is shit, man. You should try something else. Don't do that. Don't do that. A lot of people do that. You know, I, I, you know, sometimes people will smoke this thing or, or they will smoke a no band cigar, like not band cigar. And they'll be like, dude, man, you should smoke one of these Perdomos. You know, that thing, man, don't do that. I know, and there are some people do it out of the kindness of their heart. Sometimes they'll be like, you know, have one of these. Don't smoke the whatever you're smoking. Just don't do that. I have a problem with that because I've seen people do that. I'm like, that little dude is trying to enjoy his cigar. Why do you have to tell him that thing sucks? Right? Let him work his way up. He, he probably knows he sucks. But, you know, until you have something better, you don't know what sucks. Right? Just think of it this way. 
if you live in North Korea and never come to America, you don't know that there's a radio station that's better than the radio station that you're listening to. You don't know that people are at home with five computers. You don't know how good the internet is in the rest of the world, right? So let them try it. Let them try it out on your own. There's so much to learn. There's so much to learn for, for, for the cigar world that, you know, for us to budge and say, what you have sucks, it's just not cool. So that's, that's another, another one. Like how, how many, many people, people actually here that actually been to a cigar lounge where you, you sit down and they, 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 some, some of the people, people just become a snob all of a sudden. But he is the expert. And he's, he's going to tell you everything you did wrong in the lounge. How many, how many people had that problem? Once, Once you sit down, you know what you're doing, but they just had to tell you that you did it wrong. Like how many people had that? When you sit down, you're about to let out your cigar. They, they just gotta go, hey, dude, that's, that's not the way to do it. it. Or, hey, don't use that straight cut. cut. That's, that's not good. good. Use the B cut. How many have, have, have that issue? That have been to, to a lounge that had people that do that? that. That's, that's another. And one, one of the other things that I thought was uh, kind of semi inappropriate is people, people who blow smoke right in your face. Right? I, I, I tend to not, not like when my smoke kind of just pours that face uh, and moves to someone else's face. I don't like that. I tend to blow a certain way uh, so that it doesn't go to their face. But some people just don't care. They're going to come talk to you. Hey, how are you doing? And the, mob, the, the whole mob of smoke is right in your face. So I, I think that's another problem. I don't know. <clears throat> Just, Just because, because I like to smoke, smoke doesn't mean I like the second hand smoke. So. A lot, a lot of people, people have, you know, when, when they, they go. go. Like that. In front of you while they're talking to you. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. know. Some, Some people find it appropriate. It's just cigar, you know, cigar smoking. There's got to be smoke around. I, I can't control these smoke that's traveling to them, even that, that I kind of wave it off, off sometimes. But if I, it looks weird, but I tend, I tend to blow sideways so that it doesn't bother everybody else. Because you're, you're already in a room full of smoke. smoke. So I don't really think that you need to add that additional smoke to somebody's face. Some, Some people, people does that. Please, Please don't do that. Peter Boswell, Peterson Boswell, I, I, I don't, don't get, get that reference. reference. Glenn, Glenn, would you kindly explain that reference? Little respect does go a long way. Because when people realize that you know, you're being respected to them, they will respect you, and that's how you're going to make friends. And uh, the cigar experience is really about making friends, right? Going to lounge is really to meet people. Be respectful. And that's really rule number one is to be respectful. And then everything else will go along. If you don't think that's respectful, don't do it, right? So like, for example, if smoke is for someone's face, don't do it because you think that if somebody did it to you, you wouldn't be happy about it. Uh, and, and don't assume that someone is, uh, don't know what they're doing. You must ask. If they ask, hey, how can you cut this thing? I have no idea. You can't help them, right? Don't, like, if some people like to cut their whole cap off and smoke that, that's, that's what they're like. like. Don't tell them that they can't cut the whole cap off. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't remember, remember the name, so I, I wouldn't know. So, um, vaping in a lounge. To be really honest, I don't think it's appropriate. I have a different microphone now, so if it echoes, it must be YouTube. It must be YouTube. It has to be because I'm not using the microphone that's on my laptop anymore. I'm not using that microphone either. That's weird. Hold on, hold on, hold on one, one second, guys. I'm just going to listen to myself and see how it sounds like. Uh, just, just excuse me a little bit. I want to listen to myself to see how it, how it sounds like. Oh, yeah, it is echoing, huh? That's 
that's so weird, weird because, because I only have one microphone. microphone. Uh, that's that's got to be YouTube issue. issue. That's, that's got to be YouTube issue, issue for sure, because, because I already changed the microphone. microphone. Testing one, two, three. No, it still echoes. Why? Now, now it shows my stream health is not that good right now. Uh, but I do have an individual network on it right now. So I'm wondering what's going on with that. This has got to be, I'm pretty sure, it's YouTube issue. It's not, not my microphone because I changed, changed the microphone, microphone and, and it still does that. It shouldn't. It's so weird. Testing 3, 2, 1. Yeah, it echoes. What? It's not for me. I can tell you that right now it shows the YouTube is like kind of weird. So it's not, it's not for me. It's actually from YouTube itself. You know what I want to do? Um, yeah, it's YouTube issue. I didn't change anything. I didn't change anything. I didn't touch anything, Glenn. It just all of a sudden happened. It's not me. So, this issue came from YouTube, not from me. Alright, this issue came from YouTube. It's not from me. It's not from me. Uh, so, the, I lowered the, the quality of the video. And I think that when the quality drop uh, to a certain level with YouTube, it starts to echo. I think that's what's going on right now. It's not it's not from me uh, that I just did anything. Because you can see, I was talking to you guys, it was totally fine, all of a sudden it's an echo. So it's YouTube. So I am... I am thinking to... Because I want to finish this cigar today. So, why don't we move towards, move to Facebook? Would that be better for you guys? Let's move to Facebook so that the issue wouldn't be there. Now, let's move on to Facebook. I'm going to close this string. Let's move to Facebook and we'll continue there. I'll see you guys in two minutes. 